Today we're going to be talking about Season 2, Episode 2 of The Chosen, talking a little bit more about the new relationship between Philip and Matthew. So, stick around. Welcome to The Snipe Life, where we look at creativity through the lens of Christianity. And I just wanted to say hey to all of our new subscribers. The last week for us has been insane. My name's Brandon. I run this channel with my wife, Vanessa, and we're so glad to have you guys. But let's jump right into this episode. What do you mean, two days' worth? He said to leave enough firewood for the next weary traveler. You heard that, John? Mm-hmm. What if there isn't enough? Used up all the dry stuff. Well, it's good to have some strong bodies around, like the Sons of Thunder here. What, you told him? Don't worry. He made himself look just as bad as you did. Hey. Who is that? Maybe it's a scout from... Where are we, Serushia? Maybe he's just walking. No one just walks in the Bashan. No one but us. Shh, shh, shh. Don't come any closer. He's Jewish. You think? What do you want? For the Romans to go away. For a pretty wife someday. I ate a fattened goose once. I love that again. Are you followers of the Rabbi Jesus of Nazareth? Don't say anything. Could be a spy. Spying for whom? For what? There are spies. But they're not smart enough to dress like this. So we see in the beginning of this episode, immediately there's a new person approaching the group, and they're super defensive. We saw even in season one how Peter was always looking for a way to protect Jesus and protect the group. He was looking for escape routes or ways that they could be safe, basically. Because um, he knew that there would be people that would want to hurt him, that would be against him. And so Peter is being even more diligent in that pursuit of security for the group. Um, and the rest of them are very wary as well. Um, and so it's interesting the first time that we meet Philip here. Are you Simon? Son of Jonah? Who are you? You're new at this. I get it. Once you've followed your rabbi for long enough, you won't even blink when a strange man such as myself walks out of the woods with a message he can only give to Jesus directly. Yeah, we are pretty new. Doesn't make us dumb. We can't let you see the rabbi without knowing your business. I can't say. If you want to send me away, fine. Say hello to my friend Andrew for me, though. What do you think? I don't know. Bring him in, I guess. Let Jesus figure it out. Something's not sitting right with Simon. And who has friends? Philip! Hey! There he is! <laughs> wow! You smell terrible! Uh, what did you expect, huh? Come on! What are you doing here? Uh, so this is how we see Philip first introduced to the group in The Chosen. However, in scripture, it's a little bit different. We don't know a lot about Philip. There's... Obviously, several of the apostles who we don't really hear a lot about, such as Little James or Philip here. We know that he's an apostle. We know that he does things later on, but, you know, there's not a ton of information. And it says in the scripture that Jesus went to Galilee and he found Philip and he said, come and follow me. So obviously in scripture, the meeting of Philip happens differently for sure. But for the sake of story, they wanted to fill out his background and kind of tell you a little bit more about him. And so we learn here that Philip was actually a disciple of John the Baptist, um, which some people kind of debate. Um, you know, it's something that we don't really know, but some people think that he might have been. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of cool to see him coming from John the Baptist being sent to Jesus in this episode. Again, when we watch The Chosen, it's not a replacement for scripture, right? And so we can't just assume that all of these things are perfect and that it's exactly what happened. Um, but it does make for an amazing story and helps us to want to read the scriptures more and figure out what did really happen. What are the differences between the show and scripture? And that's what I love about it. And you can see immediately right off the bat, Simon, Peter and Philip, they kind of have this tension between them. Um, you know, two very alpha personalities, uh, kind of coming together. So it's kind of interesting. Let's keep watching. We've been back five minutes. 
Philip. Philip. You'll never know when you get to sleep next. Or when you'll have clean water. Take advantage when you've got either one. Thank you. Sounds like you're in a war out there with creepy with John the Baptizer. Uh, no. War has rules. What did you find? Nothing suitable. Of course you didn't find any. Where did you look? To the east. One mile. That's the ravine. Anything you'd find there would be wet. Yes, I discovered that. But there was wood. It was wet. That's Matthew. He checks the ravines for wood. Probably fishes in the desert, too. <laughs> mm. Good work, Matthew. Thank you. Who are you? Well, I'm the guy who drives wood. Now, if only you had an arsenal of weapons, we could do it in the manner of Ezekiel. How did Ezekiel dry his wood? No, it's the prophecy against Gog and Magog. And then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and make fires of the weapons and burn them. Shields, Shields and, and bucklers, bucklers, bows and arrows, and arrows clubs and spears. And, spears. and they, they will make, make fires of them for seven years so that they will not need to take wood out of the fields or cut down any out of the forests. For they will make their fires of the weapons. Shall we? Hey. Keep the fire going. So we see in this scene, Philip meeting Matthew for the first time. Now he's kind of getting to see how the dynamic of the group is, and he immediately spots, right as Matthew comes up, that the group kind of dislikes Matthew. And again, this goes back to Matthew being a tax collector. In the ancient days, tax collectors were not these kind of robotic, um, you know, corporate workers like we think of today, right? They were ruthless. And oftentimes, let's say Rome asked you for $30 for taxes. Well, a tax collector would say, hey, you owe Rome $60. And then they would take the other $30 and put it straight into their pocket. And so Matthew was most likely this type of tax collector. And this is why we see all throughout scripture, when they speak of Matthew the apostle, they call him Matthew the tax collector, right? Because it was an important part of his past. And it's really hard for a Jewish society to get over that. Um, and so for the disciples, they're still quarreling with him they're still figuring out how to deal with him as a person over the next few episodes we're going to be talking about episode three which deals with this situation heavily but there are a couple of interesting parts to this scene first we see the dynamic like i said but we're also seeing how all the disciples except for matthew have some knowledge of the scriptures philip brings up the point that if they had weapons they could burn weapons for wood and then he starts quoting ezekiel a part where they're basically saying a warning that god is giving to gog and magog and these are rulers at the time. And basically in this scripture, it says that the Israelites will take their weapons and burn them instead of taking the wood from the forest around them. Now, the main point of this section is not to focus on that scripture, but to just iterate the point that Matthew doesn't know the scriptures and neither do Mary or Rhema. And so it's kind of setting up this dialogue. Later in the episode, Matthew and Rhema and Mary begin talking about how they can begin to learn because they want to learn the scriptures. They're excited about it and they want to catch up to everybody else. And so really what this point is iterating is that Matthew is an outcast. He is not like the rest of the apostles. He doesn't know what they know. He's not as tough as them. He doesn't know how to survive like them. And so it's an interesting point to kind of push him outside of the group and make him feel like even more of an outcast. Let's continue on to see how Philip kind of interacts with Matthew. Did you learn to dry wood before or after you started following John? What's up with you and Simon? He doesn't like me. He sees me as his enemy. Why? As a tax collector. Mm-hmm. Now he's everyone's enemy. That doesn't shock you. I was something else once too. Once you've met the Messiah, am is all that matters. Next time he rides you, remind him that the people out there, 
They want to define us by our past, our sins. Out there, where? With the sleepers. But we're different, but awake. I don't understand. Well, you haven't felt any relief except with him, have you? Your rabbi? No. I don't expect to. How did you memorize prophecy? In Hebrew school. Like all Jewish boys, didn't you? I started, but then I skipped ahead. Skipped ahead? Never heard of anyone skipping ahead. What did they do that for? I was sent to apprentice under a bookkeeper. Were you that good with numbers or that bad with Torah? I was proficient in both. No, I'm kidding. How old when you skipped ahead? Eight. Eight? I showed unusual promise. <laughs> I bet you did. How come you never circled back to Torah? I was paraded before the magistrate. Rome offered me higher wages than the annual income of my father and three of his brothers combined. Bought my first house when I was 13. Why did you need to buy a house? My father kicked you out. I don't blame him. I, I thought you said he's a man. He acted by man's standards. Everybody in your old life is playing a different game than you now. Do you get it? No. Everyone speaks in riddles. I can understand esoteric ideas. They're not beyond me. Of course not. You'll probably pick it up faster than the rest of us. I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to sound like an oracle here. It's a force of habit. Spend all your time with a rogue preacher in the wilderness and you get to be a little obtuse. They're simple ideas for complicated people. I just... In your obtuse language... Here is a circle. It represents everything in the world and all the people that have ever been. And that's me. That's how I feel. Well said. Good for you. And yes, I've been living literally outside this circle with John the Outcast for a couple of years, so I can relate. You're fine, Matthew. Stick around. You're gonna be all right. So in this scene, we see Philip interact with Matthew for the first time, and it's very, very significant for Matthew. This is one of the first experiences that Matthew has had with someone else who is actually caring about him and wanting to know more about him. And Philip saw kind of the dynamic that was in the group earlier, where they're all against him. Even Matthew says it himself, right? He says that Simon sees me as an enemy because I was a tax collector. And not only that, but in this show, right, in The Chosen, Matthew was Simon and Andrew's tax collector. So it was a very closer relationship there where he feels personally hurt by him. And so Philip understands the situation. You know, when, when Matthew says that his dad kicked him out, Philip says, yeah, I understand why he would do that. <laughs> you know, makes sense in a, in a human mindset, right? Um, kind of speaking the same kind of things that we see in Paul's writings later on. But Philip is pretty quick to come back and say, you know, but we are not of the world. We're not supposed to be like that. And so when Matthew draws a circle on the ground and says, I'm an outcast, I'm different. I don't belong to anybody else. Philip is one of the first people that says, yeah, I don't, I don't belong to anybody else either. <laughs> you know, when I've been traveling with John the Baptist, you get kind of used to being outside of this circle. So I'm with you, Matthew. Let's do this together. It's a very important scene for Matthew because he's going to start growing and learning and trusting people that he hasn't been able to trust ever in his life. All right, moving on to the next scene.
What's that for? It turns a blade into a razor for logs. Protects your hands. Thank you. I've never done manual labor before. Uh, you must have worked pretty hard to avoid it. But that's behind you now, too. Got to lean into it. Let someone teach you a thing. Laugh at someone's jokes, and then tell jokes. Do you know any? Any what? Jokes. So, was it difficult to leave it all behind? No, it should have been. I was comfortable. I had a dog. <laughs> Bold. I like it. It was a source of amusement for others. My house was bought with blood money. My parents and I haven't spoken much in years. And numbers didn't make the world clear anymore. You gave everything away to keep it. But it's uncomfortable when nobody likes me. If this rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth, called you, it means you already have everything you need for right now. He'll give you the rest in time. I just don't know what he sees in me. He's a religious teacher, and I know very little about religion. From what I understand, Jesus doesn't love everything about religion. Matthew, what you think you know doesn't matter. Only that Jesus chose you. That's where your confidence comes from now. I know he knows what he's doing. Just wish I did. Skipped out of Hebrew school at eight. I think you'll catch on. <laughs> Here's an easy one. If somebody asks you to tell a joke, tell them you have a vegetable joke, but it's corny. <laughs> we'll work on it. So here we begin to see Philip really take Matthew under his wing. And he's trying to teach him how to fit in a little bit more. Matthew feels like an enemy. He feels like he doesn't belong. But Philip is starting to understand that the story of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, it's all about the outcast, right? You and me, <laughs> the ones that are not meant to belong and how we fit into that picture. And so Matthew is the embodiment of that in this episode. He's trying to learn how he can be a part, but also knowing that maybe it's not that important to be like everybody else. Maybe it's okay to be different. I love the part of the scene where Philip says, you gave everything away to keep it. You know, we see this a lot in Jesus's teachings as well. You know, the first shall be last. And all this, this world flipping kind of idea that Jesus has. So the story is awesome here. Through Matthew, we get a really good idea of who Philip is. And in this version of the story, right, we see Philip is a very well-educated, strong believer who is ready to follow Jesus. And in the scriptures, that might not necessarily be true, but we don't have any other context. So giving him some flesh on the bone, so to speak, helps us understand and relate to him a little bit better, even if we might not have the full context of who he is. But that being said, make sure you're always reading your scripture and seeing what the Bible actually says about each of these characters before you take everything from the chosen at face value. Now, Philip as a character in the chosen seems very confident. I think he's definitely going to be playing a leadership role within the group in some way. And Jesus even says during his conversations with Philip that he will be basically the furthest along of all of his disciples, the most well-educated, the person who knows the most. And this is because Philip trained with John the Baptist, Jesus's cousin, right? Um, and so I can't wait to see more of John the Baptist uh, later on in this season. I know that we've seen sneak peeks of him coming up, so I know that that's coming. Uh, but it'll be very cool to see how Jesus and John the Baptist interact. 
Um, I've always wondered myself, you know, what that would look like. So it'll be cool to see a depiction of that as we get closer. Now, there are some other great nuggets in there. So if you want us to talk about anything else from episode two, please let us know. But other than that, we're going to be moving on to episode three of season two. And this one was quite an interesting one. We're going to do a full breakdown of cinematography on the one shot that they did. It's a 15 minute long one shot, which is almost unheard of in the vast realm of movies in general, but especially in Christian creativity, we haven't seen something like this, I don't think ever, and it was amazing. So I'm super excited to break that down for you guys. As well, we're gonna talk about the discussion that the disciples have and kind of yelling at Matthew a little bit for being a tax collector. And also we're gonna talk about the relationship between Mary and Jesus now that he's an adult. What does that look like? And how would Mary kind of fit into all of this in actual kind of, traditional history and in the scriptures so if you want to see some of that make sure you subscribe and you can hit the bell if you want to get notified whenever we post new videos that'd be really cool and uh yeah like i said thank you guys so much for being here thanks for being part of our community and we'll see you on the next one peace